with you. Praise the Lord. Praising you, servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be his name, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all the nations, we race class or gender divide us, convict us with your presence and draw us all into the unity of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. Now I have told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and now he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if it is by this time tomorrow. I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, 
and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread, baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 23. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead to us Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all alone and in one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, in the 8th chapter and beginning at the 26th verse. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it to the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This, this is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace. The scripture readings for today um, remind me of two things, faith and love. When we teach our baptism classes, an important verse that we look at is from Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. It is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all are one in Christ Jesus. This verse is recognized as one of the first Christian creeds. It is argued that it in fact predates St. Paul, who has incorporated it into his letter under reference. His idea is to convince the Galatians that the Gospel is meant for Gentiles as well as Jews, and indeed for all creation. God is God, not only of the Jews, but also all of God's people. This is how the first Christians understood themselves. For as the letter tells us, we are all children of faith and baptized into Christ and clothed with Christ. That being true, 
There is no such thing as black or white. No shangra will suit you. And so on. People should not fear one another. Hence, xenophobia is not Christian at all. We are all one. Once more, there is no distinction between male and female. We are all beings, meaning persons, offspring of the Supreme Being. Patriarchal society does not fit teach the Christian model. Love is the adhesive that bonds all people together and accordingly to God. These are very difficult times we live in. Throughout South Africa, probably some 70% of the population has been baptized, including those in authority and who wield power. Does all of that 70,000 live the faith that calls us to live according to the creed that's been highlighted? Do we love one another? God has no preferences as far as He creation is concerned. And to no person, group or nationality, is more favourable in God's eyes than any other person, group or nation. God loves us all equally. And so it is that faith is a soil in which love takes root and blossoms and thrives. So that if we say we are members of the Christian faith, that means we love other people and creatures of God, warts and all. But yet, in South Africa, something like 35% of our population are unemployed at this very moment. None of these people feel that they are on, equal, on an equal footing with other members of society. Most of them are discarded or rejected. While does the scripture under reference, there is no Jew or Greek, there is no slave or free sung to them. When they have no food to eat or a shelter from the cold, If we are true to our baptismal teaching, then we need to apply the solutions that are available to create opportunities for employment. Greed prevents these solutions being put into place, since it means that those benefiting from the situation will have to change and so to open the economy for all to be able to participate and share the fruits this economy, fruits of God's blessings. Yet, greed doesn't encourage people to share. I'm going to diverge for a moment. My favourite scripture is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. There Jesus says, I am the way, the light, and the truth. I see this as a perfect fit, for there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. When Jesus says he is the way, his way is to consult God the Father, we read in the Gospel that Jesus slips away from the crowds or gets up early in the morning while it is still dark and has conversations with God. Here he learns what the will of God is. The two of them build an intimate relationship which allows Jesus to know that he is fully supported by God when doing God's will doing what God desires. How, that, 
how is that obey and love? Jesus says, I am the light. The life of Jesus was all about compassion and mercy. He recognized the dignity of every person, whether male or female, Jew or Greek, rich or poor. I am the truth. Jesus spoke about justice and righteousness. He taught justice and righteousness. Truth is to ensure justice and righteousness. That is the faith of the church. That is our faith. That allows love to spread like a wildflower and give everyone freedom. Sadly, we in South Africa do not live up to our baptismal teachings and to its creed. Isn't it incumbent on all who are baptized to live the Jesus way, to live his life, and to live the truth? Prayer, praise, worship, thanksgiving brings us into an intimate relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's will can therefore be clearly understood and known and practiced. And then there is no Jew or Greek. We are all one family with a common goal of living the Jesus way, which means that all benefit. In other words, it is the will of God that we use His creation that He has made available to build things like power stations, rail networks, dams, agricultural facilities, that will employ people to provide the labor for such projects. Further, by living the life of Jesus, that is, being compassionate, should lead to policies that create for work, create work for the unemployed, that they might feel dignity and work. And so, in that life of Jesus. It is for us to build schools, hospitals, clinics, where teachers, nurses, and all the related commercial activities can provide employment. The policies that provide the right infrastructure, water, electricity, homes, and all basic needs can be satisfied. Justice and righteousness which I have identified as the truth which Jesus calls himself, actually means that the practice of tenderpreneurship, cadre deployment, BEE, and all other racist practices should be outlawed. If ordinary people could use their business skills without having to be sidelined and overlooked because someone knows someone who knows someone, then job creation and opportunities can be a reality. Then justice and righteousness will be our landmark. It means that police and law enforcement agencies can be fully staffed and such staff can be recruited from the unemployed. And so the unemployed the unemployment situation will be drastically reduced. When the correct business environment is created, then a host of new businesses come into being, from accountants to gift shops and everything in between. Then we are all living according to the integrity of our baptism. Then there is no Jew or Greek. There is no slave or free. By following the Jesus way, life and truth, by honoring our baptism teachings of no Jew or creed, slave or free, the legion of evil that the gospel spoke about shall be thrown into the deepest sea. 
that legion of evil is destroying our nation. Let our population not be like the people of Gerasene, who turned the Jesus away because they didn't want goodness in their lives and be in their city. And so, to close with faith and love, I turn to the Psalms 42 and 43, which have been said this morning, and in particular to the refrain that is repeated there. That refrain reads, Why are you so full of heaviness, my soul, and why so unquiet within me? Oh, put your trust in God, for I will praise him yet, who is my deliverer and my God. Catherine of Siena, who lived in the 14th century, wrote about those, about that refrain. And she says, I pray you to pray that all of us may drown in the humble land's blood, which will surely make us strong and faithful. We will feel the burning fire of divine love and be co-workers with His grace and not despoilers or destroyers of it. In this way, we witness our fidelity to God, our trust in Him, rather than our own sufficiency or our trust in anyone else. It is with this same faith that we love a creature, for just as love of neighbour comes from love of God, so does faith, both in general and in particular. For if it, as there is a general faith that corresponds to the love we feel towards all creatures, so there is a special faith between those whose love is closer. This latter is like the more particular love that exists between the two of us, a love demonstrated by our faith. So much love is manifested that it is impossible to imagine that either of us desires anything but the other's good. It is an earnest belief because it insists both in the sight of God and of men that what is sought in the other is solely the glory of God's name and the good of the soul. And we beg God himself to provide along with burdens, an increase of fortitude and perseverance. This kind of faith sustains the one who loves, never letting the love waver for any reason, whether from the tongue of man or the wiles of the devil, or even because of distance. If anyone should do differently, it shows that the love of God and neighbor is perfect. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our healing. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. church, that it may know the power of your spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We pray for your servant Steve, our bishop, together with Tarbell, our metropolitan, and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments, that by their life and teaching, your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you. Guide and prosper, we pray, those who strive for the spread of your gospel, and enlighten with your spirit all places of work, learning and healing. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations, that ruling with wisdom and justice they may promote peace and well-being in the world. To this congregation and to all your people in their different callings, give your heavenly grace, that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts, and serve you truly all the days of our life. In your compassion, Father, comfort and heal those who are in trouble sorrow, need, or sickness. We praise and thank you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother, mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the heroes of the faith in every generation. And we remember before you your servants who have died, praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your unending joy. Grant this, Holy Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Now for a few announcements just before we go to the moment of peace. Uh, you have all the announcements in the cutie field. I'm just going to emphasize a few. I know that some of you last Sunday were looking forward to breakfast rolls today. Unfortunately, we've had to postpone that uh, to next Sunday. The breakfast rolls, uh, apart from uh, them feeding us and creating fellowship, they're also meant to, uh, it's a project by the Juan Valley's committee. So please uh, support uh, this effort. 
Also, we know uh, that we had a cake sale uh, last Sunday. It will be a once a month thing. And there is a note there. The fundraise team uh, is appealing to you for any donations in support of their cake sale. Please find an ingredients donation list in the narthex. Uh, or if you wish, you can give, you can give money towards uh, this effort. Please find bank details in the queue leaflet. The reference for this particular fundraise uh, effort is fake. So if you're using EFT, use that as your reference. The next case say will be next month and you'll get the exact date uh, in, in due course. Another uh, emphasis is this that our Lisseri charity shop will be uh, closed for the foreseeable future, but we still receive donations towards it. Uh, you can contact the office uh, if you wish to make an arrangement to make a donation of things that can be sold that are still in good, usable condition uh, for others. Also, the soup kitchen. Uh, this is a, a, a continuing appeal to support the soup kitchen with 20 liters of soup uh, each week. But also, I'm happy to announce that we now have <coughs> filter coffee as a part of what is offered on Friday. So if you are available to come on Friday, you find that uh, we have also got a coffee and also built a fellowship among ourselves with those who come to the soup kitchen on Friday. Also a reminder that there will be an even song and benediction service next Sunday at after 6 in the evening. Those who are celebrating birthdays, we have this coming week, Zinzile Makanda, Michelle Lockenberg, Nicholas Avenga, Elizabeth Bane. Paul Weidman, Umela Moreni, George Yates, Pierre Rousseau, Joseph Yates, Thomas Goodwin, and Sabine Sona. We celebrate with you your coming birthdays this week. May they be so blessed and so happy that if I come by yours, I'll be a slice of cake. May you please stand now for the feast. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. salvation. Blessed be God forever. The third Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. 
and and also also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Saviour you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because today you have gathered us together at this Eucharistic feast so that we may be renewed in love, joy and peace. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, the God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, and death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Using the fourth acclamation, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord, Lord, by by your cross and resurrection, you you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Steve, our bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with him and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, Forever and ever. Amen. With our Savior Jesus Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We, we who are many are one body, for we all are take of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear on our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. This is the Lamb of God, and this is you who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and your servant shall be healed. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, his blood which he shed for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs> Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From a malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you with the saints and the great you forever and ever. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father Almighty, we, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, sacrifice in Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Send, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.